everyone. Welcome back to Mindset, Thinking Outside the Box. We are your hosts, Jillian Willie. And I'm Lisa Bonacountry. And I'm Eileen Edwards. And today we are talking gratitude. Yeah, so you know, what is gratitude? By definition, gratitude is the quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. So, I mean, what do you guys think about that? What's your take on on it? Yeah, so I think gratitude is a mindset. I think a lot of people have a conception that gratitude is an emotion, but I personally look at it as a mindset. I feel like happiness is an emotion. Um, excitement is an emotion. Anger is an emotion, but emotions are reactions that we experience in response to an external circumstance. So I feel like they come from our memories. They come from the past. Um, and I feel like gratitude, like you said, it's about expressing being thankful for something. It's about taking time to pause and notice and appreciate the things that we have in our life. Um, so it could be things, material things that we have, you know, um, your games or your house or your cars or things like that. Um, but I also think taking the time to sit back and think about the things that we take for granted every day, like having, you know, yeah, we have a house, but it's a warm place to go at the end of the day. You have a warm bed to sleep in. You have food to eat. You know, we have clean water to drink and bathe in. We have friends and family who care about us, who we care about as well. Um, so I think all of that goes into gratitude. Um, Eileen, what do you, what, what's your take on that? I agree that gratitude is a mindset. And I feel like um, you have to have it as part of your thinking, like your everyday thinking and your life, um, recognizing, like you said, the things that you take for granted, but recognizing things big or small. So I think oftentimes what people do is they'll express gratitude when something um, surprising or something that's great happens, but they miss a lot of opportunities to um, express gratitude, to feel appreciation. Um, and there are things that we can express gratitude for that can be challenging or even things that haven't necessarily occurred yet. <laughs> um, so it's not just about the things, but being grateful for experiences, being grateful for things that are to come also. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, mindset for me, or sorry, gratitude for me is a mindset as well. Um, it raises, like it's a instant shift in energy. It raises your vibration. Um, Dr. Robert Holden, he's a psychologist and author and broadcaster. He works in the field of positive psychology and well-being. And he says, the miracle of gratitude is that it shifts your perception to such an extent that it changes the world you see. And I know since I started practicing gratitude, um, my vibration, like my energy is, it's higher. I'm happier. Um, and it's like what you were saying, Jillian, that it's, it's, um, it's mood, right? It's, it's, um, it, what were you, I'm sorry, repeat what you were saying again about the beginning where you were saying, um, it's an emotion, I was, I, I was saying the opposite. I think that gratitude is a mindset. And I think most people think that it's an emotion. Like they think like, oh, I'm happy. So I'm grateful for this. When really, in my opinion, anyway, it is a mindset. It's a way of being and, and being present um, in the moment. And, and sometimes, as Eileen said, it can be what you're thankful for, for what's to come. 
Um, but I do think it's a mindset. So it's like a mindset, but sort of it's, it can change your emotion. And I think is what we're trying to get at. It can bring about happiness. So it can give you a state of joy, happiness, peace, calm, love. Yeah, I agree. Just want to um, add that it came up for me a couple of times while Lisa was talking that um, when you express gratitude, you have more to be grateful for. So it's almost like that attraction. So it's like, yes, you're expressing that. And a lot of people don't do the expression part of it because um, thinking like, thinking internally that, you know, well, of course I'm grateful for that. But that expression of gratitude and making a point to share it, whether it's just with yourself or with others, um, it does give you and bring back more to be grateful for. Um, and the opposite can be true. If we complain about things, then we can attract more to complain ab about. Um, so I do think it's important um, to express gratitude, but for the little and the big, um, and everything in, in between also. Eileen, I think that's a great point that you brought up to express gratitude for the big and the small. I think we look at things as big and small, but in reality, I don't think there is big and small. Everything Agreed. has a place to be celebrated and to be happy for, and I think that's part of the beauty of gratitude is that everything, it, it just is, it's, it's wonderful no matter what it is and whether it's simple, whether it's complex. Um, I actually watched a video the other day called A Good Day by Brother David Steindl Rast. I hope I didn't butcher his name there. I will post it in our Facebook group for everyone to check out. So if you're not part of our Facebook group, please check it out. Post a lot of awesome content. We're really excited to interact with our audience. But that video totally opened my eyes to a whole new, new way of thinking about gratitude. Um, he, in the video, he was saying to be grateful just for the fact that we wake up in the morning. And that we see, you know, people who, who do see color, see a vibrant array of colors, you know, and there are people out there that, that are blind or who are colorblind or, you know, so being thankful for whatever we do have, but it just opened my eyes to a whole new array of, wow, like I take that for granted every day. I believe like it's just, it's like one positive emotion leads to another. So it's exactly what you're saying, right? Like you start really looking at what you do have and I think you'll start seeing more of it, right? Um, that's just how I, I, I feel like gratitude can lead to positive actions as well because, um, I was going to add to what you were saying, Lisa, that um, actually Jillian too, but um, when I say like being grateful for things that are big and small, some people find discomfort um, with gratitude sometimes, um, or they feel like they don't have any, <laughs> there's nothing to be grateful for. And that's why I say big and small. So it's not necessarily that things are good or bad, but like, when you get stuck, because I have a, a daily gratitude practice that I'll talk about later, but when you get stuck and you're like, well, I don't really feel like there is anything. So even saying something like I'm grateful to have clean water, like Jillian mentioned, or uh, my friends and I joke a lot of times we'll say, well, we're sure grateful for indoor plumbing, um, but just picking something and having like that go-to of things that um, might seem small and that we take for granted, uh, but expressing those, because again, 
expressing gratitude does give you more to be grateful for. So then that, that like kind of um, attracts to you. And so you might be thinking you're only grateful for the little things at the moment, um, but that can attract bigger things. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And you touched on emotions um, and I, I completely agree with you there. We apply emotions to things. So that kind of has that, you know, big or small, good or bad. And it's really cool. I've had this big, this mind shift as I've been expressing gratitude and learning um, how to, how to do that and, and really taking the time to see what, what I'm grateful for in my life. And I actually had a moment this morning, which was really cool. It was early, like eight o'clock early for me. Uh, um, and um, we were taking our dog out and my two kids, my one, my two-year-old and my three-year-old wanted to come. And typically, they, you know, they do their thing, whatever the dog goes to the bathroom, they go inside five minute ordeal. Well, it rained last night. So there was rain puddles everywhere. So we had just gotten dressed, which was an hour long process in itself. And then we go outside and they start splashing in the puddles. I'm like, okay, well, we'll have to go, you know, clean their shoes off, whatever. So then I turn around and they're in the mud. So there goes everything, clothes, dirty faces, everything. Like, oh, we just took baths last night and we're freshly clean. And in that moment, I had this like, you know, the old me before I learned about gratitude, before I had a mindset change, would have been frustrated that we just got dressed. We're only supposed to be out here for five minutes. Now we have to go inside and do baths and blah, blah, blah. And I would have been very frustrated about that. But instead, I looked at it from this viewpoint of gratitude. My kids are having fun. They're starting their day off exploring. They're um, connecting to nature. They're enjoying themselves. They're playing together. And I just saw this beautiful experience to be grateful for. And that five minutes of outside time turned into an hour and being outside in the fresh, I mean, it was a little chilly, but in the fresh morning air, first thing in the morning was actually really beautiful. So, you know, we apply those emotions and we can be great. We can choose to be grateful for anything that comes into our life or choose the opposite. So I thought that was a cool, it was a cool realization for me. You know, I love that, Jillian. Um, and so coming from like a mom who's got like a 14 year old now, and I love that you see this when your kids are so small, because like you said, you were saying the old you, you know, before gratitude, before all of this stuff we're learning, which we have so much to get into coming further into our podcasting. But today, of course, it's gratitude. But anyway, me too. Same thing. I, I, when you talk about it and how much joy you you're seeing and your kids mucking up their clothes, cause all they're doing is having fun and they're living. And if that was me three years ago, oh, I would have been like an absolute, like first thing I would have done is scream and yell and get frustrated and like, ah, oh, and think about think about how I just did that with this, you know, we just got dressed, it just took all this time. Whereas when we can live in the moment and just be like, well, who cares? Because clothes can be washed, right? Like who cares? It's not a big deal. But when you look at it and you're so grateful in that moment that you just can stop and see the joy it's, it's a feeling, right? And it completely shifts things, you know? And I know even with my own son, gosh, I wish so bad I was learning this when my kids were your kids' age. My, my kid, <laughs> my son, I only have one. Um, but, you know, it's, we're working on it here now, but man, if, imagine where our relationship would be now if we were doing this earlier. But I mean, that doesn't matter because we have now, so we're working forward. But yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I mean, what do you guys do? Can I ask you guys what you do on a daily to express gratitude? Like your like rituals that you do or 
kind of. Sure. Um, so for me, I have a pretty deep gratitude practice. I, um, after, well, I meditate first. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. But after my meditation, um, I do my daily gratitude. Um, I call it my gratitude countdown. And so I just um, list. Um, sometimes I actually write them down. Sometimes I just say them. Sometimes I share them with someone else. Just depends on what's going on that morning. But 10 things that I'm grateful for. And sometimes... It's a um, real quick list of 10. And sometimes it's, you know, semi reflecting on what happened the day or the night before, like, oh, I'm so grateful to have participated in this uh, event last night or I'm so, and just 10 things right off the bat. And I know some people only do like five, um, but that's part of my morning. So I wake up, I meditate. So I, you know, in peace in the present moment and i'm grateful um and then i've told jillian this before that um i do a gratitude countdown activity with my kids um, anytime we're in the car so anytime we're driving in the car uh we play the game and it's just one person um uh, usually me starting it but um saying you know gratitude countdown Zachary and Zachary goes first and he we call out 10 through one until he gives 10 things he's grateful for and then we go to Zoe but um so we do that and so that's a practice that I have and then I've found recently um with doing the gratitude countdown every morning that I oftentimes either around lunchtime or dinner time I'll have this like urge to like express more. Um, and so sometimes I do it more than once a day. Uh, and then usually if I do it later in the day, I share it. Um, so I might share it on Facebook or I might share it in a text message to someone or I might share it in um, another mindfulness group that I'm in um, because sharing gratitude, not just that expression with yourself, but sharing it with others. Um, it lifts their energy too, not just yours. I love that. I was just thinking that as you were saying it, sharing. Um, and there's like so many, there's different ways to share too. Like, um, like I'm just trying to think like for your classrooms, and that sort of thing, like if you guys, um, it's it's a little difficult. To, like, I mean, I don't say difficult, but it's, it is a practice. So when you start doing it, I mean, like how, how can you show gratitude? Not just say it, not just think it to yourself, but show it. Um, you know, like things like, you know, instead of I'm grateful for this and like I'm, I'm grateful for this pen or I'm grateful for my cup of coffee or I'm, but it's also like when you're trying to tell someone, like there's other ways to express gratitude with, um, to each other and things like, it was really kind of you to, or it really helped me when. Um, so you're taking it also not just like about what we have in the I am's, but what other people have done. Like the, there's this awesome quote by John Bon Jovi. I'm sorry, I'm like a huge fan. So I often take a lot of what he says and, he says, um, and I'm, I'm going to assume it has to do with his song that he wrote called Thank You for Loving Me. And it says, he, he says in a quote, it's easy to say I love you to someone, but it's more meaningful to thank them for loving you. And that's always resonated with me. Um, and I just think that's such a beautiful song because that's exactly what they're doing. They're thanking someone for loving them. So it's like a state of gratitude also. Sorry, I heard a question when you were sharing initially. Um, you had said like in our classrooms kind of things, what can um, we do 
with children, even, even if you're not a teacher with your own children. Um, and I mentioned the game, that game, but um, I do think that as part of like morning meeting, uh, Jillian and I are both elementary school teachers. And so um, as part of morning meeting, um, we have gratitude practices that come up. It'll be part of our, you know, morning message um, for kids to share out something that they're grateful for. And oftentimes it will be things like you mentioned, Lisa, where um, we talk about like, what's something that you could do to show someone that you're grateful for them? What is something that you could do for a family member or for a friend to show them that you're grateful? And kids will say, um, help my mom with the groceries or like give them a hug or, and so there are other ways to show thanks to people and appreciation to people. Um, and something that I give my students and I think that Jillian does too um, is journaling, gratitude journals, but I'll let Jillian step in. Yeah, I love that. Um, I do actually do the same thing. I started during morning meeting doing a share where everyone shares something they're grateful for. And it's been interesting. Not all the kids are there yet, but quite a few of them started out saying um, surface level, I'm thankful for my Xbox. I'm thankful that my mom gets me presents at my birthday. And some of them I'm noticing are starting to move over to more of the deep. I'm grateful for my teachers. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for this school. And that's been cool to see that transformation happening. Um, I love those questions. I think those questions really help the kids dig deeper also. Also, I think modeling is huge. So just throughout the day, taking time to say, oh, I'm so grateful that we have this lunch to eat. You know, I'm so grateful that we get to get outside for a recess and run around and play with our friends. Not so much now, you know, we have to be a little more careful with playing right now, but, you know, just getting outside and having that time. And so I think kids model what they hear and what they see. So I think us as the adults, whether you're a teacher, whether it's just, you know, at home with your kids, what you do what you say, they model that and they're going to internalize that as well. Something else that we do, we do meditation. So I've started small, um, I teach second grade. So we do just like two minute meditations. And then over time, you know, we're, we're building up to like five minute meditations. but we do the meditations. And I found one that really goes well with gratitude you breathe in what you're grateful for and then breathe out and say thank you. So I thought that was a nice way to incorporate the breathing and, and the mindfulness with the gratitude as well. And Lisa, do I remember something about a gratitude stone that you have? Yeah, um, I love my gratitude rock. Uh, so the story behind my gratitude rock, um, I can even just share it. Um, so I was doing Weight Watchers and at our meeting for Christmas time, uh, the lady who used to run our group painted a whole bunch of different rocks for everybody. And she said, whatever resonates with you and she wrote little quotes on all of them, you take that. And um, the one on gratitude is what resonated with me. So I took it and my gratitude rock says to start each day with a grateful heart. So I have my little stone, my beautiful little rock, and I have two pictures on my bedside. Um, one is just of me and my husband when we were, after we just got married. Oh my gosh, we look so young and youthful. <laughs> I just had to add that because and then the one next to it is in a frame of the big family tree where it's the day um, that we were just about to leave the hospital with my son. And a little history for me is I have had health issues my whole life um, with my heart. And I wasn't even, I, I mean, I was told I would probably never have kids. 
So, I mean, that was a big day for us. So it's all three of us standing. I'm in holding my son on my chest and I'm leaning on my husband's chest and he's got his arms around both of us. And I feel like our hearts are just completely connected in that picture. And so those two pictures sit there with my gratitude rock. I look at it every morning and every night and just to keep me mindful of, you know, what I, what I have, it's huge. It's huge. So that's my gratitude rock. I highly suggest when you carry it in your pocket. I know lots of people carry them in their pockets and, you know, just so that, you know, if they put their hand in their pocket, it's a little reminder to look for things to be grateful for. And Jillian, does, do you do gratitude journals in your classroom? I'm not sure if you do. Yes, we do. We do two things that they're grateful for. And then I have them send love to somebody so they can choose whoever they want. Then they write their goal. They write their intentions, which are like their action steps. And then they write two manifested gratitudes. So two things that they're grateful for with their goals achieved. So that's the practice that I do at my house in the morning um, in my gratitude journal. And it's been so powerful for me. So I wanted to bring that to my students as well. I love that. Uh, with being home um, and virtual learning for almost a year, uh, well, some of mine are still actually more than half of my class is still virtual. Um, we have um, online gratitude journals that we keep as a class. And so a lot of times when, um, if we have finished something, uh, because I'm a huge advocate for not cramming the day with more and more um, work, it's like, oh, you finished all of this? Now go ahead and do that. Um, and so I'm a big advocate for um, providing opportunities to rest and reflect and that kind of stuff. So we have online gratitude journals that they keep. Um, and they just have like different prompts um, that relate to gratitude where they have a chance to express it in different ways. They each have like two of them. Um, and so those have been really um powerful over the last um however many months this school year's been we didn't do them at the end of last year but we have been doing them all this year um and i'm always um my heart's always warmed when i like open them up and see the things that they come up with um and i figured you were probably doing it as well yeah would you be willing to post that into our facebook group so that other families could have it and then i could also tap into that resource uh absolutely the resource that i have i'll have to see if i have it in um file form because all oh, i have to have it somewhere but i um i have it using the class kick app which is like a educational app for um students and teachers to be able to work side by side um, on assignments so that like I can see all of my students work and they can see what I'm writing feedback but I, I'll find a way to share that absolutely. Thank you and I'll put my I'll put a copy of what I use with my students on there as well for everyone. And Lisa, real quick, I just want to say that your story is absolutely heartwarming and so beautiful that is just oh I love it. Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say to you guys as teachers and me as, you know, a parent of a student, um, I'm just so grateful that you guys um, incorporate this in your classrooms. And, you know, I'll just tell you a little story. My son, um, so he has ADHD. Um, so we went through a lot of struggles through that, but when he was younger in grade two, um, his teacher used to do a little meditation practice with them. Like every time they come back in from recess to kind of just whoo, chill them back down to like, you know, cause they're, they're what they're, I don't know, how old are you at grade two? I don't even remember anymore. 
Seven, eight, yeah. Seven, eight, right. Imagine they're all coming in for recess. Wah! And anyway, my son to this day, he loved that practice so much that he listens to a meditation every night while he goes to sleep. He's 14 now. Um, and I just like, wouldn't it just be so great if we could just make like mindfulness and gratitude and everything it is that we talk about here and will be talking about, but part of the curriculum in schools, like even if it was just like a 20 minute morning, like, you know, I just sit there and I picture like, I mean, now I'm probably thinking more junior high, um, just because, you know, their minds are always, they're so worried about what everyone's thinking all the time. And it, it that like, those insecurities just heighten in junior high. So, you know, like, could you just imagine 20 minutes in the morning, you come in and everybody just plays a little bit of music, you put your heads down, down so nobody can see close your eyes, put your heads down. So you really feel, I, like, I remember one, my drama teacher in junior high used to do a practice with us quite a bit like this. And it was amazing. Um, I loved it. But if they were to do that, um, and then either if it's like a guided meditation or just some music, and they just takes, you know, 10 minutes to do that of just being grateful just mindful of everyone around maybe things that happened you know the day prior or what they want to put forward in their day-to-day -day. and then you know 10 minutes of that and then maybe 10 minutes of like just journaling and you know just of what they're feeling or maybe what their goal might be for a day like like those 10 minutes could maybe be goal setting or how you want to go about your day, things you want to do, maybe about, you know, just like having this in the curriculum for 20 minutes a day could make such a huge difference because like we've been talking about um, gratitude for one thing, it's like, it's a mindset and it's about feelings. You can't just, you know, gratefulness is more about what, feels good and you're grateful for that right so I just think allowing the kids to explore that every day and in their mind intentionally think okay what else can I do today to make myself grateful or what can I do for someone else that I was grateful that you know or and they'll keep looking for those things after Yeah, I completely agree with you, Lisa. And that's why this year I have really started working on gratitude and meditation and mindfulness practices and real goal setting with my students, just to give them that. I mean, it is so life changing and getting these kids from a young age and then carrying it through their whole life. I mean, their lives will be, I mean, unbelievably amazing. You know, um, and actually it's funny you say that too. My paraprofessional that I have in my classroom, who's amazing, she expressed to me the other day that she wished that her children had a teacher teach her kids this when they were younger. And they're, she's still, uh, they're still in elementary school, one of them, but she's like, I've never heard a teacher teach this before. This is amazing. She was like, I went home and I told my sister and all of this stuff. And she's taking copies of everything that I'm doing, like my gratitude journal. She was like, I need a copy of that. So yeah, I think it's really powerful and goes a long way with children and adults as well. But just to get them from, from the very beginning and and keep it rolling. I mean, it, it's a life changer. Well, that's as a parent, how I felt, you know, when the teacher was doing that in grade two, like I was like, wow, that's awesome. And now my son, like, I mean, prior to that ADHD, that time was never easy, but he just took it and he did it. And now he goes to sleep with it every night from that day forward. It was just easier. So I just so grateful to you guys. Thank you so much for doing that in your classrooms. I just hope we could get it further. I hope everybody starts doing it in their classrooms. So, you know, that, that's a really great goal to just try getting it in there.
Yeah, that's what one of our purposes. I know that's at least one of my purposes on um, on this journey and Eileen's as well. And I know Lisa, you feel the same. Yeah, to get this into the hands of every single school, every single classroom, every single child, every single person on this planet and imagine the different the different planet we would be on. Um, so ladies, do you have any last regards before we wrap up our episode? Um, we covered a lot. And we're gonna talk more next time um, about gratitude. Um, dig a little bit deeper into gratitude that maybe people um, might not be familiar with <laughs> expressing. Um, so there's all kinds of ways to express gratitude. Um, and one of those um, is a little bit more challenging. I like to kind of call it reframing. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about gratitude next time. And I just wouldn't mind finishing off um, just a couple little notes that I've taken um, just by why does gratitude matter? If I can just touch on that. So not only does it feel good, it is good for us. Um, brain research has showed that when we have a positive emotions, it's good for our minds and our brains. Positive emotions balance out negative emotions. So people who often feel grateful and appreciative are happier, less stressed, and less depressed. And I mean, in this day and age, where our world is at, I think we all need to work on that. You know, we don't all need to be in this state of, you know, everything is ending and we can't do anything. Like there's, I mean, for me, I can, I look at this as the, this was a huge opportunity for me because due to my heart illness, I could no longer work. Well, I, now I'm coming out of some very traumatic stuff, but without that space that the universe presented for grace and time, I wouldn't have done that for myself. So I think the well, unit sort of kicked my ass into gear with that sort of thing. Um, and I started these practices and I went from depression, deep depression to where I am today, which is I wake up every day, honestly, so early and so excited. And three months ago, every time my alarm would go off, it was like the hardest to drag myself out. And I would only push myself out because I had to help my son. And before my word was deal with the day. And now it's not. So positive emotions, being grateful, it gives us positive emotions and it opens us up to more possibilities. They boost our ability to learn and make good decisions because I was not making good decisions. So... I just wanted to throw that out there um, before I left. So it matters, you guys. It really does matter. It doesn't only feel good. It is good for us. So that is absolutely beautiful. And I think that's the perfect note to leave our lovely audience with on, on this beautiful day. So thank you ladies for expressing gratitude. And we are so grateful for every one of you for listening. And we will be back next week, digging deeper, as Eileen said, into gratitude and, and just kind of talking about some of the deeper, deeper ways to be grateful and how to be grateful for some of those things that may feel challenging to be grateful for. So thank you everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you.